Hello and welcome. My name is Melissa Peterson and today we will be going over the Clerk Auction screen. The Clerk Auction button can be found under the Auction Day section of the Easy Navigator or at the top toolbar under the Clerking button. As you can tell from the screen, there are several different options within the Clerk Auction screen. Safety backup tools, presentation options, and clerking. The first thing we're going to look at is the safety backup tools, as these are the first things you should be starting before starting to clerk your auction. We're going to look at the auto backup feature first. With the auto backup feature, the system makes a full backup of your data set every so many minutes while the auction is running. You determine how many minutes the system waits between backups. Generally, we suggest 10 minutes between each backup during a live auction. You also determine where you would like your backup stored. Generally, we suggest not running this tool on a primary computer because if your primary computer goes down in the middle of the auction, not only does your computer go down, but all of your backups as well. If you're running this tool on a secondary computer, you can utilize the Workstation Repurpose tool, change your secondary computer to a primary computer, use a backup that the system made, and be up and running within a few minutes with the new primary computer. Once you have these settings set, click Go. It's going to, again, warn you if you're running this on a primary computer, and then it'll ask you if you'd like to start with a backup. Generally, we suggest starting with a backup. You can never have a, too many backups. Once this tool begins running, you just want to click the Minimize button at the top of the pop-up. You want to make sure you do not close this, as this will stop the tool from running. The next thing we're going to look at is the Trail Printer. What the trail printer does is print a hard copy of all your clerking activity as it is entered into the system. You determine how many lots the system waits between printing out each hard copy, as well as what printer you'd like it to print to. Once these settings are set, click the Go button, and then just click behind the pop-up. This will automatically minimize the pop-up for you, and it will continue running on the bottom of your screen. Unlike the auto backup, you can run the trail printer from the primary computer without any issues. The next thing we're going to be looking at is the presentation options. First, we're going to look at the auction presenter. The auction presenter allows you to present lot information to your audience while the auction is running. You can sync the auction presenter with the clerking screen, so when a clerk enters in a lot number, it will show that lot number on the auction presenter on a TV or projector that the audience is watching. For this example, I'm just going to do a manual advance so you can have an idea of what the presenter looks like. It will show lot information, lot number, and an image. The auction presenter can be customized depending on how you'd like it to run and what you would like it to look like. The next screen we're going to be looking at is the auctioneer screen. With the auctioneer screen, it allows the auctioneer to have all of the lot information right in front of them, such as reserve, absentee bids, phone bids, estimates, the source information, and the auctioneer can also determine what pictures they'd like to show at the presenter at what time. This is a great tool for an auctioneer to have in front of them while the auction is running. Now we're going to actually get into clerking an auction. We're going to do this via the clerking grid button. For this example, we're going to start with a cataloged auction. So for a cataloged auction, I'm going to enter in the lot number that I'm clerking. Then I'm going to enter in the unit price for this item that just sold and the bid card number that purchased it. With a cataloged auction, you do not have to clerk in lot number order. You can skip around and clerk whatever lot is currently up. For this lot number, there's a quantity of five, but this particular bidder only wants two of them. So when it gets to the quantity fields, I'm just going to change this from five to two. You can tell once I changed it to two, it changed my unit price times my quantity for my extended price. I can continue clerking lot number three until all of the quantities are sold. With a cataloged auction, you can also group lot numbers together. If the lot numbers you are grouping together are sequential, you can use a dash. I'm going to group lots six through 10. I'm gonna do six dash 10 and then enter. It will group my lots together and then I can sell them as a whole. Or if your lot numbers are not in order, you separate them with a comma.
If at any point you realize that you made a mistake on a prior lot, you can use your arrow keys to arrow down, make an adjustment, and then arrow back up. To clerk a choice lot, this lot number 13 has a quantity of four. I'm going to enter in the unit price that it is currently selling at, the first bid card number, the quantity that this bid card number wants. When it gets to the save button, instead of hitting the enter key on my keyboard, I'm gonna hit the plus sign. What this is going to do is repeat all of my information, including the unit price, and just ask for the new bid card number. Again, I'm gonna put the quantity and hit plus. Now with this, we drop the price down to 50. I'm just gonna use my arrow keys to arrow over, change the bid price, and then save. If you are clerking a cataloged auction and an auctioneer adds a lot that has not previously been cataloged, the first thing you need to do is find the next available lot number. To do that, you're gonna put your cursor in the lot number field and enter zero. Zero and then enter, well, the system will automatically find the next available not being used lot number. Then you can enter in the source code and the lot item information. Go ahead and sell it and then you can continue on with your cataloged items. You can switch back and forth between cataloged and non-cataloged throughout the entire auction if you'd like. Now we're going to move into non-cataloged auctions. With non-cataloged auctions, we're just going to, again, I'm going to enter in zero to find the next available not being used lot number. You're going to enter in a lot number or zero and then enter in your source code. Your source code is the customer code of your consigner. Enter in your source code and then just enter in the description of whatever you're selling. The price that it's selling for and the big card number. To clerk choice on the fly, my example I always like to use is tools. I'm gonna to enter in the description, the unit price of the first item that's going out, the bid card number, how many that bid card number would like. And then again, when it gets to the save button, when it's highlighted, instead of hitting enter, I'm gonna hit the plus sign. It will repeat everything I just entered and ask for the new bid card number. The new bid card number wants three. I'm gonna hit again, hit plus. And then the new big card, this big card number wants two plus and seven plus. Now we're dropping the price down to $10 from 15. I'm just gonna use my arrow buttons on the keyboard to arrow over, change the price, the new big card number, the quantity they would like, plus sign again. And now we're selling at $10 instead of 15. And again, if you need to drop it down again, arrow over, drop it down, and continue selling. Once you've sold all of your items, go ahead and click the, hit the enter instead of the plus sign right here, and then you can enter in your next lot. With the clerking screen, what we tried to do is to make it where you never touch the mouse, making it very quick and easy to keep up with your very fast auctioneer. That's the majority of the do's and don'ts for the clerking screen. The next screen we're gonna look at is the clerking change log. During that example, when I was arrowing down and either deleting a bid or changing a bid, it was recording all of that information in the clerking change log. If your cashier makes any changes to bid prices, quantities, or bid card numbers in the cashier screen, it will also show up in this screen as well. You can search for a lot number to find that information quickly as well. Additionally, you can even print this information in a, in a report. Some other useful screens in the clerk auction screen is the clerk lot. You can search for a lot using different criteria. You can highlight a lot and click change bid card number to change the bid card number or change the consigner. Or you can click edit to pull up the full clerking activity and change it as well. You can find all of the lots by consigner using the buy consigner button on the left hand side. You can click remaining. This will show you how many lots have not been clerked yet in the system, or you can click find lot to find the clerking activity for a specific lot. Like every screen in AuctionFlex, there's a report button that will give you an option to print several different reports relating to that screen. We have clerking sheets, so if you're hand clerking, you can clerk directly on a clerking sheet that we print out for you, as well as some post-auction reports as well. 
That covers the majority of the clerk auction screen. Thank you for joining. For additional videos, please visit auctionflex.com.